The Czech Republic lies at the very heart of Europe. In its past, we find events and places significant both for secular and religious history. Thanks to the country's rich architectural heritage and the wealth of preserved documents and locations, we can still revisit the story of Christianity in Bohemia and Moravia today. Two brothers from Greek Thessaloniki, St. Cyril and St. Methodius, laid the foundation of Christianity in Great Moravia back in the 9th century, centered in Velehrad, today a popular place of pilgrimage. St. Cyril and St. Methodius brought the Slavs the scriptures written in the language they understood. The expansion of Christianity soon extended from the Byzantine Empire to Rome and thence to the Czech princes. The premise-led Prince Wenceslas promulgated the Christian faith as well as general learning and became the main patron of the Czech lands. Life in the premise-lit era is documented in the rotunda of St. Catherine, part of the premise-lit castle complex in the town of Znoimo. On the walls of the rotunda are preserved contemporary frescoes with both Christian and secular motifs. From the 10th century onwards, the Czech lands became more and more part of the Western world. St. Adalbert brought Christianity to the Slavs in the Baltic. Brzevnov Monastery in Prague, the first male monastery in Bohemia, was founded and consecrated on the 14th of January 993. The monasteries brought with them education. The most prominent in this respect were the Benedictine and the Cistercian orders. From the beginning of the Middle Ages, Jews settled in our lands, mostly as traders. Originally well-respected and wealthy business people, they were later deemed unwelcome and run out of royal towns. The Jewish quarter in the town of Trzebic bears witness to the distant past. The building of the Czech state reached its apex during the reign of Charles IV, who as Holy Roman Emperor made Bohemia and Moravia into the spiritual center of Europe. Charles joined both banks of the Voltava River, started the construction of St. Vitus Cathedral at Prague Castle, and founded Charles IV University. He was also a collector of relics of the saints from around the world. He also built Karlstein Castle as a place of rest and contemplation. The Catholic Church found itself in a crisis. In the spiritual center of Europe, the hunger for reform grew. Jan Hus, born in the village of Husinets, was one of the first callers for the reform of the arrogant and politicking clergy. 
His sermons in Prague's Bethlehem Chapel scandalised church officials and Hus was in the end burnt at the stake. After his death, the Czech lands were for many years engulfed in the wars between the Hussites and the Catholic armies. Under the leadership of Jan Žižka, the Hussite military base, the town of Tabor, was established. Once the hostilities ceased, the successors of the Hussites, the Utraquists, set about the spiritual renewal of the country. The Teen Church became the seat of the Prague Utraquist Archbishop, and the church facade bore a sculpture of a chalice until the time of re -Catholization. The Czech denomination Unity of the Brethren heralded the onset of the European Reformation in Germany and Switzerland. The first translation of the Bible into Czech language dates back to the second half of the 16th century. It was printed and disseminated from secret Brethren print works in Kralitsa, hence its name, the Kralitsa Bible. The Jewish faith also developed its spiritual centres in Prague, Mikulov and Trebij. Its best known proponent at this time is the elder Lur ben Bezalel, known as Rabbi Lur, who according to the legend, created the mythical golem, saviour of Jews from pogroms. The golem's remains are supposed to be hidden in the attic of the Old New Synagogue in Prague. In 1575, a mission was sent to the Emperor Maximilian I, seeking a common Christian faith for non-Catholics. This so-called confession was granted in 1609 by the Emperor Rudolf II and, for a time, gave religious freedom to all Christians. In this period was built the Protestant Church of St. Salvatore and renamed after recatholization the Church of the Virgin Mary Victorious in the lesser town in Prague. The end of the Thirty Years' War ushered in the era of large-scale restoration of the country in the Baroque style. The Baroque endeavours to celebrate the glory of God in imposing churches full of exemplary craftsmanship. brings the faith to the countryside and as a result there are many chapels, roadside crosses, pilgrimage routes and extensive gardens and parks scattered all over the country. The era of enlightenment is connected to the rule of the Emperor Joseph II and his reforms. One of these is the so-called Edict of Tolerance which permits open adherence to Protestant, Orthodox or Jewish faith. In the wake of the Edict many prayer meeting places for the reformed churches were built. In the Valashsko, Visochina and Polabi regions, many tolerance prayer meeting places were built, reflecting the progress from the vernacular Baroque to the classicist style, simply constructed by local villagers without towers and arched windows. The passage of time brought into the spiritual domain the modernist culture and with it many exquisite and still enchanting architectural monuments in the style of Art Nouveau, Neo-Renaissance, Neo-Gothic, Czech Cubism, 
and functionalism. This progress was halted by the arrival of the totalitarian regimes of first the Nazis and then the communists. Thanks to the former, the Jewish faith was almost extinguished and any active opponents of both the regimes were severely dealt with. During the communist era, many synagogues, churches and prayer meeting places were turned into warehouses and workshops or fell into ruin. Since the Velvet Revolution of 1989, the activities of the churches and religious communities are on the rise, and new churches, community centres and chapels have been established. Many efforts have an ecumenical basis, such as the Motorway Chapel near Pulzen. Christians also meet every year at an ecumenical gathering on Rzip Hill, the legendary cradle of Czech settlement. We could give you a much longer list of all the places in our country where during our history Christianity left its distinctive marks in stone and sand. But it is more important to stress the fact that the journey is not at its end and new and exciting chapters are still being written in the modern history of the Czech lands. <laughs> <laughs>